Okay, now we can talk about dopamine in more detail and how it drives learning in the basal ganglia in the way that we discussed with this law of effect. And the basic idea is that the dopamine uh, neurons, which are located in the substantia nigra pars compacta, so SNC, which is different from the SNR, um, this brain area sends all these dopamine projections into the striatum and there are D1 receptors on neurons that make up the direct pathway and D2, dopamine D2 receptors on the no-go pathway. And dopamine has opposite effects on each of those different types of receptors. So if you get a burst, an extra amount of dopamine coming in, again, as a result of an unexpected positive outcome, some kind of reward that was better than expected, um, that results in a net excitation of the GO neurons and also an increase in the synaptic connections of those neurons from the frontal cortex. And so this kind of drives LTP, long-term potentiation of those synapses, and therefore makes it more likely next time that you will drive that same GO decision given that it led to a positive outcome the previous time. Now the time differences in these kind of, you know, when you receive the dopamine relative to when you make the action is one of the most important and challenging aspects of this whole circuit. Uh, there's always some delay at least. And so how exactly the system works to, to manage that delay is still a, a very active topic of research. But in any case, it has to, has to do it one way or another and the, the logic very much makes sense. So now let's take the complementary case where uh, you get less positive outcome or maybe a negative outcome relative to your expectation. And now you get less activity of these dopamine neurons shown in this red color. Um, what that ends up doing is actually making the no-go neurons more active and drives synaptic plasticity into the synapses into those no-go neurons. And again, the logic is if you chose something last time, that choice led to a negative outcome, then what this is doing is saying, next time we're gonna learn more activity in this opposing no-go pathway so that it will make us less likely to, to make that kind of go choice. So this is very much an opponent process, this tug of war, this balance between the overall weight of go on the one hand and no-go on the other, and that really decides ultimately whether we decide on this action or some other action. Um, and one thing that's important, a subtle detail, is that that no-go is really a kind of referendum or a, a, a vote about that original action that we took. We actually have to take the action in order for the uh, response, this dopamine signal, to sort of be applied to that particular action. And therefore there's really an association between these go and no-go neurons they're kind of about that same action. And so it really is this kind of battle about that same choice. So the D2 receptors uh, are responsible for driving this. Um, and when those no-go neurons do get activated in the context of a situation where maybe you've now accumulated several negative outcomes, um, that no-go pathway, as opposed to the go pathway, has this effect of inhibiting a population of neurons in the GPE that were previously active, as shown here, um, they're now not active, and that is removing inhibition on the GPI, and therefore making the GPI more active, and therefore less likely to get uh, disinhibited from the GO pathway, and kind of keeping the brakes on, so to speak, uh, keeping that inhibition on the thalamus, preventing that from opening up and therefore kind of saying, no, let's not do this action. Some other action uh, can, can maybe, which has less of this no-go opposition, might be able to break through and, and uh, open up the circuit. Uh, but this particular action that's getting a lot of no-go uh, in this case doesn't. And so that's really this balancing act between the go and the no-go. We actually uh, developed some of these early models. Michael Frank was a student working in my lab at that time, and he's gone on to do a, a really amazing amount of work on these different uh, circuits, really validating and extending and 
uh, providing a lot of evidence consist consistent with this overall idea, uh, which has uh, at this point stood the test of time pretty well. So uh, one idea also that we developed was that uh, this same circuit, which had been described earlier by a number of researchers in the context more specifically of action selection, our kind of overall contribution uh, was also to extend this up into the level of high level cognitive functions. In particular, the idea that you would kind of update a plan, which is really maintained in working memory uh, as a result of this go versus no go gating. And we'll look at that in chapter 10 in the context of kind of executive function and working memory and how those two concepts are interconnected. But for now, we'll just think about it in the context of this kind of action selection, this more concrete choices of what are you actually going to do.